Unit two, lesson two, transforming data. All right, the first thing I'm gonna start you with is remember we're gonna start with a check for understanding on the previous lesson. Here's the notes if you miss them. You can put your video on pause if you need to write them down. Okay, so for the first one, make sure that you do this work before you watch the video and then you can make sure you understand what's going on. All right, so find the percentile for Ohio, interpret this value, and you can see Ohio is right there in red. And so what I did is I, there was 50 dots here and Ohio's the 43rd. So since it's the 43rd out of 50, we call that the 86th percentile. Um, I know yesterday when we wrote these notes, it says the percentile of the values is less than a given. Really, it should be less than or equal to because it's equal to, the Ohio is 40, the 43rd piece of data. So really, it's less than or equal to. That's a better definition. So there's 43 states that are less than or equal to Ohio, and that is the 86th percentile. South Carolina is the 52nd percentile of the distribution. How many representatives did South Carolina have in 2019? So if you multiply 52% times 50, you get 26. And so there are 26 states that have fewer representatives than California or South Carolina. And um, South Carolina has seven representatives in 2019. And you can count up from the minimum and you can see that that's where it's going to be. And the next one, it says calculate the z-score. So z-score, remember we learned yesterday, was a value minus mean divided by standard deviation. And the z-score for Ohio, you saw that we got 16. When you look right up here, the red dot is right there about 16. So that's the value. The mean says here at 8.7, and the standard deviation is next to it at 9.723. So that's how we got that. And what that means is that's my z-score. That's the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. So this is 0.751. And to interpret that, we would say the number of representatives for the state of Ohio is 0.751 standard deviations above the mean number of reps in all 50 states. Um, how many counties does each state have? Um, and so we look at the different data here. And we see Ohio has 88 counties in which distribution um, number of representatives or number of counties is the further away from the mean, just by your answer. So we're gonna see, well, 88 counties minus there's the mean of 62.82 um, divided by the standard deviation and 0.542. So Ohio is further from the mean of the number of representatives with a z-score 0.751 uh, than the distribution in the number of counties of 0.542. Since 0.751 above is a higher or further away than 0.542, that means that it's going to be further from the mean. All right, let's jump to our lesson today. So our lesson today, oh, sorry, um, is can you curve the test scores? It's on the next one, it's a lesson two, and it's transforming data. So what I want you to do is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the test scores in your calculator and make the dot plot. So this is what I did, is I put this here in the test scores here, and I put score here. And actually, I already sent it to your calculator, so if you look at the calculator, you're gonna see everything already there. Then um, we're gonna make a dot plot, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you just so you see. So I'm gonna add, and I called it score, and there's my dot plot, which is, as you see here, this first one here, the top one. Okay, so then pause the video so you can do all that and then start it again. Okay, once you've started, it wants you to add five points to each one. So as I said, I already did this for you so you can see, oh, sorry. And I'm sending you the data already and that's gonna be score and you're gonna see that's labeled as score plus five and I'm gonna show you how I did it. So you can score plus five it's, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna yell at me because it doesn't like how I, I get a P5, there we go. Score P5, so it's score plus five. And the way I do that, if I'm showing you how to do this on here, is I, I'm right below the title, I hit equals, and I'm gonna go ahead and put um, A, because that's column A, plus five. Okay, so then I'm gonna go back to my dot plot, and you can put the dot plot on top, but you can go from here, you can hit menu, plot properties, add X variable, and then I'm gonna choose score plus five, and you can see that I'm gonna graph them together. So your, your, will, your calculator will do that. Again, the, the commands were menu, plot properties, um, add X variable, and then whichever one you wanna add. 
All right, so the first thing it asks you to do, you can see here what happens to the shape. You can see the shape's the same. What happens to the center? Well, the center was, it looks like here at 80, and it looks like it went to 85. And then um, what happens to the variability? Well, the variability was the largest minus the smallest, so it was 99 minus 60, 39, and now it's 104 minus 65, still 39. So it's still 39, it's 39, so it's the same. Um, my old mean was 50 and my new mean is 85. And if you wanna find those, of course, you can use menu 411. Now we're going to multiply. Um, so you're gonna see on mine, I'm gonna go back to my data, which again, I sent to you. This is what it says. And I'm gonna write score double. Score double. All right, and then I, if I'm doing it in my calculator, if you're doing it on your own, equal sign, a times two. So I'm taking the original one and multiplying it. Wait, hold on a second. I'm seeing if they're multiplying the original. Yes, they're multiplying the original. I wasn't sure if they're multiplying the original or the new one. So let's try that again. Equals, oops, I already got A times two, enter. And so this, let's go ahead and gonna graph it here. It might be a little goofy because I'm gonna add an X variable again. It might not be very happy though because the scale's so different. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an X variable and see what we have. Score double. Yeah, so you can see, I mean, it just squished it, but it did allow me to do both because this scale saying changed so much. But that's what you're supposed to do is then tell me what happens, and you can see the expansion. On here, it's hard to see the expansion because it's we're limited to our paper, but you can see 60 changed to 120, and you can see how everything changed by doubling. And so let's go ahead and see what our shape center spread what happens to it. You can see the center was at 80 and now it's at 160, so it doubled. You can see that the shape stayed the same. It's still about the same shape. Um, if you throw a blanket over, it's the same shape. It's just spread out more. That's the only difference. So if you wanted to, the last thing on here, if you wanted to do a um, click it off and you did a um, menu 411, you can do that to get each one of the mean and standard deviations but I'm not gonna do that right now. Okay, so the notes here is that I just want you to see of what happens to the shape, center, and the spread. The variability is the spread, like the range. So you can see the shape never changed. No matter what I did to the data, it didn't change. The center, you can see I added, as I added to the center or subtracted, what happened was it just shifted. So if I added here, you can see that it just shifted to the right. So that means that the range, which is the variability or the spread, didn't change because I just shifted it. So it's still 99 minus 60 um, for the top one and 104 minus 65, which is exactly the same thing. So the range didn't change as I shifted it. The range did change in the new one when we doubled it. We had 99 minus 60, and now we have 198 minus 20, 120, so that doubled it. All right, so I'm gonna leave this on here. You guys can push pause. So if you have time, you can go ahead and do this lesson here, and you probably have time. So you might as well do it, and then we'll discuss it tomorrow. So go ahead and do the lesson here. I'm gonna show you the answers, and then we'll discuss it tomorrow. So you can see that um, after doing what it's asked you to do, suppose we have to convert the passage time to nanoseconds by adding. We're adding what happens. Everything shifts, so it's just adding. So the, the data, the shape, Go back to here, what happens when adding? The shape stays the same, just the center is going to add the amount that I'm moving, and <clears throat> excuse me, I'm moving it 24,800, so that's how much it's going to shift. The median, so the same thing, the median is the, a, a number, a set number, and it's also going to add. The IQR, remember the IQR is the, one of the spreads, anytime is how far spread out. Remember guys, it just shifted. So just like the range, it's gonna act the same way. When it just shifts, you can see it just moves and there's no change. So, and then finally, um, shape, center, spread, variability. And so go ahead and describe those. You can look at these, remember cuss and BS, center, which is the median, um, unusual features, gaps and gaps and outliers, S is shape, which is, is it unimodal symmetric, unimodal uh, skewed right, skewed left, or is it bimodal? And then spread is the range, the IQR, and the standard deviation are the ways to talk about range. All right, so now what happens when it says we're going to divide 
And so you can see this last one, um, the speed actually divides and so does anything else. Everything would happen to divide it. M division and multiplication, just like here, as I said, that with the variability, it changes. So anyway, thank you so much for listening and uh, we will talk about this um, next time I see you. Thank you very much.